In this movie, we're going to cover a few basic design tips for a summary style report. Essentially, we're going to cover a few items that are key when creating almost any type of report, but especially with a summary. One is adding the data date timestamp. The other is how to organize your summary information. The other is aligning column headers with your summary information and then shading different groups to allow the eye to follow the data a little easier. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but these are a few tips that I find useful over the years. In this example, we're going to take Report 2, a modified and cleaned up version, to kind of guide us through some of these principles and show you how they're done. Notice I have my data date and data time. This helps me realize when the report was run and serve as a point of reference. Obviously, if you run a report halfway through the month and then at the end of the month, there will probably be some differences. Unless, of course, we're talking historical data. But it's always good to have the data date and data time to let you know if something happened, you can kind of pinpoint it and explain any differences. Also, I have my report title. Then I have my shading. And then I have my placement. Let's start with the data date, data time. Go ahead to our design view and let's highlight this field. In its raw form, just inserting a data date and data time inserts a time and a date stamp. But it's often useful to know exactly what date you are actually looking at. In this case, go ahead and click on the insert menu and choose the first option, which is text object. Notice how the mouse turns into little crosshairs. Go ahead and click and hold down and drag the mouse over to as much space as you think you'll need. Then, in the blinking cursor, type in data, date, slash time, and another space. Now, the actual look is really up to you, but I find it helpful to know exactly what data, date, and time I'm looking at and have it labeled just in case I have a whole bunch of other dates I need to analyze on my screen as well. From here, we go to View and go to our Field Explorer. If you haven't already, go ahead and uncollapse these fields. Choose Data Date, click, and hold the mouse down. I'm going to drag it over into report header B and notice I have my highlighted selection box. But if I drag it up into this section it disappears and is replaced with a blinking cursor. If I release my mouse button now my data date will appear within the text box that I've created. That means wherever I move it or resize it it stays in one place. I don't have to move each field individually. Although you could set it up individually it's all a matter of taste. Go ahead and double click inside that text box and notice I have my blinking cursor again. I can use my arrow keys to move the cursor, but watch what happens when I get to data date. It skips around it. It doesn't treat data date as a text. Inside those brackets, it's a separate field. It basically treats it like one letter. If you delete it, it'll delete the whole thing. In this case, I'm just going to put it towards the end. Space, dash, and space. And then I'm actually go straight back to my field explorer, click and hold down on data time, and drag my mouse back. Notice how my box disappeared and it's replaced with that blinking cursor. If I release, my data date and data time now appear within my text box. It's a little trick but it comes in handy and saves you a lot of headache and heartache and ulcers sometimes. Now if I click on my preview tab, this is what I get. Go ahead and close Field Explorer so we can see. Now I have my data date and data time and it's properly labeled so I know that I'm not making a mistake. The next thing I like to harp on, if you will, is using the summary information and then pulling onto the report. For example, this field here, if I drag my mouse over, I get my little text tab. It says report title string. As we know from prior lessons, if I go to my file, summary info, it brings up my document properties window. And this is where I add in who the author is, what any keywords are that helps if you're searching, if it comes down to it, and also comments. Now these comments can be as lengthy and long-winded as you like and I find they're very helpful. Sometimes it reminds me why I created a port or if I had to do something special to it. Not only that, I can pull in these comments if I felt like it underneath the report title to remind the users, the final users of the report, what they're looking at. Of course that's no guarantee that they'll call me up and ask me to basically read them what's on the same report, but that's life. The point is, if I hadn't have filled it in here, I wouldn't have been able to display it here and drag it onto the report and resize it and do all those things. The next main thing I like to do, especially when I'm dealing with groups of data, is to highlight kind of main groups so that way the eye has something to follow. In this case, I have each year broken out since 1999, but I have my east and west grayed out so my eye can follow a little bit easier. If you recall, you simply right click on the group header one from either the preview or the design tab, say section expert click on the color tab and then choose the color of your choice. Beauty being in the eye of the beholder, you can choose whatever color you see fit. 
I found in my experience, though, not everyone agrees with my color schemes, as they were. And also, if things are being transmitted electronically, you really have to pay attention to what colors you choose, because colors on one monitor that look fine can be absolutely horrendous and annoying on another. From there, it was just a simple matter of making sure my sections were uniform in the same size. That way, the eye doesn't have too far to stray to go from one level to the next. You can also highlight or underline or put borders around things to draw attention to them and allow the eye to fall a little bit easier. There's a few extra tips if you're dealing with a detail report, which we'll get into shortly.